sorry about that. Record, it wasn't recorded. Uh, yeah, so basically how uh, all these seed practices were passed on from, uh, you know, legacy women to women. He also said that his mother had, a, like, you know, he had, her, his mother had some of the rice varieties with uh, himself, with her. So he took, and they used to do puja, like the rituals in every harvest festival in Tamil Nadu. So I think like some of these really beautiful practices have been passed on with um, the, the women and village elders uh, as keepers. And one more example I would like to say is that we buy honey from Nilgiri forest from a Katunayakan tribe. And uh, from them, the honey has been, uh, they have been honey gatherers for centuries. So uh, it's also very seasonal honey, it doesn't come every, so every time there's the April, April season is when the honey uh, harvest starts again. And uh, when we have visited Nilgiri Forest, uh, you know, to look at um, some of the fact, we also buy coffee from them, by, by the way, uh, Gudalur coffee. So they have this Kavi tree. And uh, every time, like many times I wondered, you know, what is it? So the, during the tea breaks and the coffee breaks, they always had a ritual with a stone under the Kavi tree and just going down to that and really paying respect to that. Uh, like uh, some of them said also that this is Devi and Shiva for us. So it was very beautiful in terms of the practices and rituals which I've encountered while working with some of the tribal commu communities across India. So I uh, pass it on to now Sumitra Ji. Uh, Sumitra Ji, uh, uh, I'm going to unmute you now. Yeah, uh, Sumitra, you'll have to unmute now. Yeah, I have unmuted. Perfect. Yeah, so I'll speak a little bit about uh, Sumitra now. Sure, sure. Yeah. So she, uh, Sumitra is involved in the training, the marketing and finances and day-to-day -day working of uh, Kaigal Trust Forest, which was started by Sudha Prem Nath and uh, it's a, uh, uh, and uh, Prem Uncle, Prem, uh, Prem, uh, Prem, Prem Nath Sir. Prem Nath Sir. And, uh, there, there were Gopalan sir and there's a trust which runs it. It's part of the Jiddu Krishnamurti Trust. And uh, while I studied there, I've grown up with it. So I thought it's a very good idea to um, bring and speak about the success story on how they're working with tribals. So Sumitra, uh, would you like yes. to speak about how Kaigal Forest started and a little bit about how you work with the tribal women of the forest? And what are the products you get sure. from processing activities? So over to you. Sure. Okay. Uh, firstly, good morning and happy Women's Day to everyone. And um, Ruchi, I'm very happy to give me this opportunity to join uh, to, uh, in this uh, program. And I'm Sumitra. I'm uh, from Kaigal. I stay in Kaigal itself. Um, I have completed my BCom. And I'm the coordinator of Kaigal Trust. It's called Kaigal Trust. And um, I take care of day-to-day uh, -day activities of Kaigal Trust. And uh, Kaigal Trust is the community-run community enterprises enterprise by women and youth around this place. And uh, it's a small marginal, uh, marginalized uh, community. Firstly, we work in three areas. One is uh, conservation education and livelihood. Uh, how this started is with conservation only. Uh, first conservation is by uh, documenting biodiversity, uh, biodiversity uh, like, uh, I mean, trees, medicinal plants. And uh, when we first started this program, uh, when we wanted to document, uh, here, uh, uh, there are uh, one community, tribal community, and we, uh, they are called the Yanadis. With the help of the, this uh, tribal people and local farmers, they helped us in documenting the native species of this plant, uh, this uh, Kaundinya wildlife sanctuary. And uh, they helped us in identifying the uh, species, mainly indigenous, which are uh not what you say um they're getting destroyed 
and uh, they helped us in setting up a seed bank and forest nursery and uh, we did lot of uh, habitation uh, restoration restoration like um, uh, rain water harvesting then soil conservation afforestation we have done like that through the various of years we have been working with them in this areas and they had a little medicinal uh, with their local medicinal knowledge so we uh, we set up a herbal garden like that and these people are uh, used to collect from the forest raw materials ntpfs non timber produce and they used to sell it in the market and they used to get some price from the government so when we started this conservation program they asked us why don't you do something with this products uh, what we are collecting so so after thinking sudha uh, premnath ma'am uh, she thought and she went to bangalore uh, she worked with different people and and tried what to do with this products all that then came back then we said why can't we help them to in uh, adding value value addition to the products example i'll give you like um, one uh, kalimbi uh, i think in in hindi it's called karonda so that they used to collect and sell it as a fruit so why what can we do with this fruit so first thing we can directly take it to market no so first we have to try it ourselves so we tried to make pickle out of this kalimbi fruit so then we uh, after trying we gave to our close friends some of them in in the valley school so uh, it was uh, it went uh, a hit then from there we trained them how to make pickle because taking into market is a big challenge these days to compete with the other products so we help them in making processing packaging and we we help them marketing like that it started with a uh, pickle then honey they used to collect honey so uh, raw honey so we had uh, uh, trained them in processing and package then like that few more, few more, they uh, one mahali root it's a creeper which grows wildly here so out of that we uh, we made uh, another pickle and uh, kalimbi itself raw fruit we make pickle ripe one we can we can make jam like that we started with these products trained them and these people were uh, were, were well trained and started working and for, this is a small in you know, lively income for them so like that we started with the products around which is available around here and easily available it's not getting it from some other uh, place or anything like that and which uh, has a long shelf life so like that we started and uh, from there uh, now uh, i think we are making a uh, 62 products with the things uh, and personal care lot of personal care uh products with the bees wax we make lip balm a uh, foot cream skin cream deodorant cream and uh, we make uh, uh, hair oils with the amla bram uh, amla brahmi which are easily available available in this place and tulsi massage oil and uh, mehndi hibiscus oil and some hair powders hair wash and conditioner and uh, for washing clothes with uh, soap berry soap berry they used to collect with that we make cleaning powder dish wash powder those things and uh, uh, along with this uh, forest products we also uh, make farm products we uh, we collect we take uh, farm products like chillies dania paddy from the small farmers who are low margin farmers with a fair price and this is here uh, in this group uh, mainly uh, there are tribal women and uh, local women and men also youth who are interested in working who are having out of the the, the place
Sumitra, your voice is breaking. Yeah, just speak up now. No? Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah, so Sumitra, no, I, I wanted to also ask you, uh, how, yes, sir. How, how has it been, um, one second. Yeah, so how, how do you go about actually preserving some of the, uh, you know, practices of the, of Kaigal, right? There must be something very interesting, like the knowledge base, like uh, the oils and the pickles, etc. Are they like, uh, like I know when I went, when I came to Kaigal, uh, I had yeah. this Dara chutney, which I will never forget, you know, uh, Muniyama actually uh, made it from the fresh leaves uh, of the plant. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So can you also speak a little bit about how some of the uh, pickles, like for example, you have this uh, root pickle, Madikeri, I think. Mahali Beru pickle. Yeah. Yeah. It's traditionally um, made um, uh, with curds. Is a preservative is curds, hmm. so we don't any uh, add any other preservative. The preservative by itself, it is a curd. Like that, we don't any uh, add any uh, chemical preservatives. Right. We test them uh, making products. We keep it for a year and test it whether its shelf life is how many days is the shelf life. And it's all like your great grandmas, those kind of uh, uh, recipes we we make. Yeah. And it's uh, fully by our own recipes, and it's not taken from any other uh, people. Right. And what are some of the processes? Like uh, Kaigal Forest also runs a school, right? So how? Yes. Yes. We do, we do have uh, uh, schools one in uh, in the tribal villages itself and it's a uh, uh, different kind of uh, education uh, it's a uh, how uh, the school the ch uh, children are from age group like uh, 6 7 to uh, 12 years different age groups and it's fully uh, made material made the teachers have made the material and it's taught in the school. Not only uh, along with the education, we teach them craft, art, and they even go out into the forest. And they also have their own practices, no? They follow their practices. Like a lot of uh, uh, skill development activities we, uh, we, run, uh, we teach in the school. Like embroidery, pottery, they do gardening, those kind uh, we teach them in the school. Okay. And uh, also, um, if these people know when they collect raw materials, they follow certain uh, methods. Like example I'm giving, uh, when they collect honey, honey, they don't collect, they don't fully collect the that honeycomb, no? They don't cut fully. They just take where the honey is half, half and leave of the uh, upper part. So sustainable harvesting, it called, no? Like that even, uh, uh, like I told you example, Karonda, no? Karonda, they don't cut off the tree. They just collect only the fruits. And Mahali example, they leave leave the main uh, mother root and collect around it. It was very nice when I, uh, I one of the person called Subhanam. Uh, uh, that's the first person I met and saw him collecting Mahali. I uh, I, I was I was the first time very uh, what do you say uh, when he was collecting. I asked him, oh, why you're not pulling out the full creeper, you're just uh, you're collecting uh, like this. So I said, no, no, you have to, uh, these these plants are very rare and it's uh, getting destroyed. So what we have to do, we ha if you leave the main uh, root, again, after a year or two years, it will give you, may, uh, um, it will uh, grow around. So like that, they follow certain methods of in the collection for sustainable harvesting 
and it's very nice he used to he, he once told me uh, earlier days after, uh, when they enter into a forest at some point no they used to not wear their footwear so it was like they used to worship the forest like they think it is a sacred and they walk in the barefoot but these days those things have not been done so he was telling all the changes have come so we do we used to do all this okay so coming back uh, okay great so sumitra ji thank you so uh, much very uh, is there anything else you want to add to this so we can take this in the next uh, question answer round um uh, so let please wait don't uh, leave this thing we we'll, i'll allow i'll bring up uh, anita paul ji now and uh, we will uh, anita and sumitra we will uh, uh, take you in the question ra question answer round yeah thank you so much that was really beautiful what you shared about the harvesting techniques and thank you yeah i know that you know you have grown up with tigal forest and you are really doing such a good job um and sudha aunty is the Thank reason you. why one of the reasons why i really i'm working doing a lot of work with the environment she could not join us sudha premna but she is a, a really senior ecologist and uh, i know that in school she gave us a magnifying glass in which we had to go and actually count the number of ants in a transect and even in kaigal we had to do a lot of transects in terms of tree counting and all the studies biodiversity assessment studies as part of schooling so i think a very big inspiration of kaigal forest has been in my life at least so very good work sumitra ji yes, to talk about kaigal yeah. i think is uh, small <laughs> it's not enough yes yes okay thank you so much i'm going to bring uh, thank you yes yes yeah. I'm going to allow Anita ji. Are you there? Yes, yes. Perfect. I'll just put you on the page. Okay, uh, Anita ji. Uh, thank you for joining us. Happy Women's Day to you. I'm so glad we finally meet on a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've heard so much about you, and especially when I came and spent some time at Uttarakhand and. i've learned about your journey um how both you and kalyan ji left everything one fine day and moved to uttarakhand and started in the 80s huh? uh and uh, so anita ji runs grassroots uh, grassroots inter, uh, grassroots international uh, grassroots pan india um pan pan himalayan grassroots development organization called grassroots foundation and also mahila umang mahila umang has to uh, has 161 self help groups has done fabulous work with biodiversity with water conservation with marketing um, they also have uh, so they do so much work like across in rani khet and so many other places uh, they were also one of the first founders of chirag you know chirag ngo and they've inspired i think so many people an entire generation of people so i'm really honored um, anita ji i hope at some point i'm able to do and we are able to do so much work as <laughs> you know you have done in your own lifetime um and you're so honored to work with mahila umang i thought you know i'll tell you this when i meet you in person but just the amount of you know amaranth we buy and chamomile we buy and everything we buy from uh, mahila umang it makes us feel so good that uh, you know we work with you it's thank you for joining us and uh, i'm going to leave the floor to you yeah thanks for the invite ruchi at the outset greetings to all on this wonderful day the uh, international women's day thanks for the invite it's so nice to see i suppose fantastic to talk about um, women as custodians of nature especially at tribal um, folk you know it's um the next has been an well known to all and the fact that women are the custodians and they are the main uh, uh, not just of nature of also of culture of traditional practices of knowledge whether it's food systems or medicine 
or uh, or just reverence for um, bounty of nature. It's a given, you know. It's the fact that, uh, and it's respected now globally by all. So that's a that's a great positive to to uh, today at least. Let's say that. But however, you know, and today uh, this year this day, I'm really happy to talk about this because 2022 has also been declared internationally as the International Sustainable Mountain Development Year. So the focus is on the mountains and Indian Himalayan region for you, it will be nice to know that 25% of the global biodiversity hotspots are located within the mountain ecosystems, you know. And um, just, you know, just to bring a little bit of focus, the Indian Himalayan region, we are good 10, 10 states which, uh, which constitute right from Kashmir down to the Northeast, you know, and also bits of Bengal uh, Darjeeling district is also mountainous. So I would just like to keep my focus on that, but not just uh, not just on mountain ecosystems, um, but generally on our, uh, you know, it's like globally, I think in India actually about 100 million tribal people are dependent directly or indirectly on forest foods, you know. And there is a very interesting data that I found on the, which says that Gaia Atlas of plant management says that there are something like 80,000 edible plant species. If you, and this is not counting the subspe the varieties within each species. If you leave that aside, it's still 80,000 plant species, which consider, which are like edible uh, varieties of food, you know, that's a significant amount. And most of these food systems are uncultivated foods. So that's the kind of, you know, the basket that we are really talking about. And of this now, only 150 plant species have historically been cultivated as large scale food systems. And of that today, only eight crops provides 90% of the majority of uh, food requirements for human beings. You know? So if you really look at this, what nature has given us, we limit it down to, um, some eight varieties, which is generally, I'm just, this is giving you overall picture on the, how those, just those eight varieties are today, the prime focus, you know, about linking with markets and linking with all. So do you really call this development or should we call this impoverishment? You know, it's a big question that you leave with. So personally for me, I started, uh, I did my master's in social work and, uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Kalyan and me, we just had this uh, dream about making a life up in the mountains and that's what we did. You know, they say that it's never, a, it's never a time wasted just dreaming, provided you do something about those dreams, you know? And then we, we just decided to move up and that's, and it's been a great, great innings. It's now over 40 years, we've been working at the grassroots and, um, and interacting with communities and especially women for me, it's been a learning experience day on day, you know. The amount of knowledge that they know is like, you wonder how did man ever get to understand all these intricacies and uh, stuff, you know. It's like forest foods, for instance, uh, it's not just, it's food, you know, it's nutrition, it's nutritional security. When there is a drought or even a crops have failed, it's known that people, mankind has dependent back on, um, on nature for meeting their sustenance. So, but the fact also remains is that today, you know, that, that uh, rosy picture probably is getting threatened and is probably getting threatened due to degradation and also a change in land use practices in itself you know and and you that therefore hear on a day-to-day -day basis all the challenges of tribal communities right from namgiri in Odisha to madhya pradesh to um, uh, to up in uttaranchal land in uh, 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 himachal and everywhere where you're talking where, where these battles of uh, sustainable harvesting practices, along with just the very fact that even your um, very basics today of fuel wood and water is also impacted because, uh, because of this uh, degradation over commercialization, uh, change in land use practices, uh, privatization. These are some of these battles that you're 
uh, reading day on day and, and the battles that uh, women come up to the forefront and you know whether it is uh, minerals that you're fighting against or uh, or companies or globalization that is happening where their land rights are being taken away and being given to um, others so you know these are some of the questions that we really need to um, focus on and what do we do how do we do and yet it's also a fact that forests have been a source of livelihood um, for majority for, for tribal communities and for women especially you know is these little little things that you harvest and um, out of there i mean so uh, 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 my colleague from uh, uh, earlier who has already spoken about such such variety from uh, of pickles and stuff that they are making uh, um, out of these forest produce. You know, even for us, things like kafal, you must have people who have been uh, tourists up in our parts of the world. Kafal is going to, the season is going to come up and the number of songs that are related to kafal, you know, uh, like Beru Pako, Baro Masa, Beru is figs and kafal Pako in, uh, uh, they, they'll, they, there's a whole, culture, there's a whole song that everything is related to it, right? There's holy, which is coming up. There are uh, songs that are devoted to our rivers, right from your birth to our last rites of our mankind. There are some things which are linked to um, mother nature. So it's that kind of reverence, which we are losing very fast. And um, that that's a bit of a challenge, you know? We are losing our recipes, we are losing our knowledge to the extent that today, if you ask some of our youngsters, our kids in school, you know, they wouldn't know some of those species. And that's a sad state of affairs because they just don't know because that biodiversity is not there. Even simple things like bichu, kasag, which was a given every winter month, you know, we would grow it and eat it because that's the green which was naturally available when everything else up in the harsh uh, weather would die. That was just so rich in iron and everything else. But unfortunately, Bichu Bhuti has disappeared from our backyard. It, this has happened to me, who has moved up to the mountains only in 87. 87 to today, the Bichu Bhuti in itself has disappeared, you know, partly because, partly because we think that these are primitive foods. You know, you, there is a whole uh, stigma also, which is attached like to millets till now, only now in recent times, maybe in the last uh, decade or so, where all these foods are being now referred to as superfoods and hence market linkages and this whole um, talk on giving, uh, uh, linking to markets as a source of livelihood through value chain approaches are all getting talked about, you know. But the point is you have to be careful with that also. You have to be careful on the sustainable harvesting practices for things like pine nuts, chilgoza, you know. It's getting, uh, where do we find chilgoza? When we were kids, chilgoza was part of our diet every winter. Today, maybe chilgoza is available in few stores uh, and at a price which is very high because of the fact that those pine trees have not been uh, harvested sustainably. I'm so glad that my colleague earlier said that they are still being uh, uh, care careful in Kaigal Forest about harvesting, but that's not the case mostly, you know, where these, uh, 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 where you just kind of give it out on lease for harvesting. You know, it's taken away. Once you take away from people their habitats and their rights, then all these unsustainable practices also have the danger of creeping in. So, yeah, so against this kind of background, what uh, Ruchi was referring to, um, grassroots, Kalyan and me started this organization in uh, uh, 1992, and our ecology and uh, conservation has been our mainstay. But along with that, livelihoods also come center stage, and especially livelihoods for women, um, uh, where there are no opportunities, you know, there are no opportunities, at least up in the mountains. And actually, there is limited opportunities elsewhere also. But with poor infrastructure, lack of opportunities, these are the kind of 
of issues which was facing us when we were youngsters and um, we got involved with community development. So uh, we call ourselves community development practitioners. We are social entrepreneurs. And uh, so uh, community owned enterprise as a way of livelihood obviously was of great interest to us which led to the promotion of uh, Myla Omang uh, Producers Company as a, as a um, community owned enterprise, what Ruchi was earlier talking about. Um, so at Umang, while uh, uh, we respect ecology and we are very careful of not doing anything that will be harming uh, the ecology. So like say natural dyes, for instance, you know, natural dyes out of anardana, wild pomegranate, uh, is a beautiful thing. And that we do, we do walnuts because that is not harming, uh, that's the outer skin that we are using. Anything to do with roots, you avoid because the minute you get into roots, is that you've extracted the whole plant. And if I cannot ensure that I will um, plow it back, I'll plant it back, then it's better not to touch that if you can't ensure sustainability, you know. So say, say things like rhododendron flowers. So some things like a squash or a jam, out of those flowers, we try not to do it because, uh, because that's one species which is very difficult to grow back. We've tried it in our nurseries. And if I can't do it, then I just don't do it, you know, because then leave it to the birds to disperse the seeds and let it happen through, you know, rhododendrons have this weird thing of growing out of rocks and stuff like that. You plant a tree, it will not happen. It has, it requires its own ecosystem, you know? So even medicinal plants, when it's collected from the wild and cultivated, there is a huge um, uh, difference in, um, uh, in the quality or the potency or whatever. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll uh, leave it here. I mean, we can talk further. So just to start this whole conversation, it's uh, thank you for this invite and thank you for this topic that you've chosen for uh, today's discussion. Anita ji, I just realized that we need to do a whole lot number of, you know, webinars because the, I, I also feel that there is so much knowledge here in between you and Sumitra ji and so many organizations that, I mean, I'm also running out of time. I need to get all this information and put it on, you know, like say a YouTube or so that it's available for all of us to, you know, uh, refer to later on. So yeah, it was wonderful. Wow, what a treasure trove. So Anita ji, I wanted to ask you, when, when you started work with uh, some of the tribal women, uh, especially with your community development, there, like if, if there is a certain herb which is dying out, like say a nettle, bichubuti, or say a rhododendron, what is the process you follow in uh, working with the women? Like in, from, from the grassroots still actually making a product, for example, or if it's a forest, and if you want to conserve the forest as well, uh, like what, how, do you, how do you make sure that you are following the conservation practice in, in the end product, you know? Like how do you go about it? Yeah, so uh, Rushi, as I mentioned earlier that uh, ecology for us is center stage, you know? So what yeah. we have also done is we've linked ecology and livelihoods together. Yeah. So uh, these women's groups, the self-help groups who are also part of the livelihood uh, uh, initiative among they themselves take care of their common lands you know so there so we have this continuous exchange of ideas exchange of practices you know especially con conversation between the younger generations and the elders in a in, elders in a community we are giving our ammas a chance to and we we spend some time listening to the stories because that wisdom is dying down you know very fast in Uttarakhand, we are still lucky that our seed sovereignty, our uh, seeds are still there, you know, no, no, no um, uh, hybrids and GM and all that is far from us right now. But the fact is, fact is we are aware that if we don't take stock of uh, um, the situation right now, we may be uh, losing out on that knowledge systems. So, but the youngsters, for instance, if you ask them, Bedu khaya hai, nahi khaya hai. You know, they only know it through the song. A bedu nahi khaya hai, which means the fig tree is not in the neighborhood, then we have to do something about it, you know. 
Yeah. So we are uh, we are uh, engaging in that dialogue. We are trying to grow nurseries, trying to plant back some of these trees back into the common lands, so that you know this man-animal conflict also is taken care of because our food production is uh, desperately getting impacted negatively through um, say monkeys, say uh, uh, say wild animals that their habitats have been taken over and they are now encroaching on uh, so-called cultivated lands. You know, so you do this dialogue, you try to grow nurseries, you're trying to put back uh, a green cover of all kinds of biodiversity from shrubs to fruit trees to uh, fuel wood trees to fodder trees and stuff like that. So that, and these, um, the self-help groups, they are the custodians. But whatever little we are doing, we are doing. The point is the policy dialogue also needs to be initiated that these self-help groups come center stage. And because um, uh, in, at least in the mountain regions, it's only 10% of the land which is, uh, culti which is privately owned. Rest of it is state owned, you know. So if you really want um, healthy habitats, then, uh, then uh, we need to interact with uh, other stakeholders and this uh, uh, multi-stakeholder platforms need to be strengthened. Dialogue needs to be strengthened. The communities need to come center stage and work hand in hand with um, other people uh, to because getting ecology back, that nurturing our commons and nurturing our um, environment, it's high time we did it, you know, right from climate emergencies to everything. It's, it, we, it's in front of us. We can't afford to take, uh, we don't have that uh, luxury of time anymore, especially for your generation, you know, so this whole focus on, uh, this whole focus has to change. This dialogue has to get strengthened. We need to do it here and now because otherwise this uh, next generation is gonna have terrible times. It's okay for us, but for the future generations, we have that responsibility to do what we can. So one more last question, Anita ji. I remember I, uh, Sunita ji from Mahila Umang took me to this very beautiful community forest that the women have created. And they said, you know, the forest fire menace is so much. And uh, it's, I, it was, I really thought that the, yeah, and the women don't know what you do. Exactly. Forest fires has become part of our lives now and it year yeah. on year, that's because of climate change, right? Pine forests have been there with us, but the fact is the spread of pine, which is so, it's uh, uh, it's a volatile thing. The pine needles are just all over and it's just so dry that it's a tinder box. It just catches fire in no time. So what is the way out? Like how can women be custodians of actually the reforestation and you know uh, forest regeneration efforts in Uttarakhand? So there are pockets of excellence, you know, people like us and people like so many others in the civil society organizations. We've done these pilots, right? We've shown it that it is possible right from right across the country for that matter, you know. Uh, but the thing is, the thing is we need to uh, have joint voices, collaborations have to be forged and jointly together we can, you know, raise a voice and uh, uh, have uh, policy initiatives with the government where these kind of things come center stage. It has to come center stage because no one can do it alone. Government can't do it without the collaboration of communities. Communities cannot do it if what we do and civil society organizations along with self-help groups do, we can only do that much, you know? Right, right. But if you want to scale it up, it can happen. Nothing is, nothing is impossible, you know? Collectively, you can do um, miracles. But, and, and, and this year's theme also is women move mountains, you know, <laughs> along with focus on mountains. It's also within that theme, it's also uh, women move mountains. So we need to do, yeah, it's a good beginning to, uh, today. And let's hope that, you know, with more dialogue, because dialogues and collaborative action is probably the way forward. Yes. Because it's amply clear that no one can do it on their own. And all of uh, uh, fortunes are linked with each other so much, not just within the country now, even with our borders, so regional collaborations. And um, because what is impacting us is also impacting our neighbors in Nepal and Bhutan, you know. 
we are all kind of linked uh, together. So these kind of uh, collaborative actions is the only way. Knowledge management, exchange of best practices, and and also just grounding those realities at the um, at the ground level. You know, we are very lucky in a country that nationally we have a strong network of self help groups now. It's in lakhs. Each state has that collective uh, power, you know, and that that can be uh, uh, that could be one springboard, you know, for uh, that that uh, uh, that human capital which is existing should be utilized, and we could have a nice uh, program around it. Great. So uh, I think uh, I I think like we can now open up the questions to people. But uh, Anita ji, I also know that um, the stream in Rani Khet has been revived for kilometers. Uh, the, you know, uh, I, I don't know when you started work, but I was told that how there was so much forest regeneration and so much effort went in reviving it. So it's it's like you know you do it that has to become part part of life, right? The thing with ecology is it's not something that I do today and we are done with. It's not a water, program, water scheme that you are implementing. So you do it and you know, six months time we, are, we can wrap up and go. Ecological restoration is a way of life and there lies, therein lies the challenge. It's for me to do, it's for you to do and it's for you to pass on the baton because that's a lifestyle that you have to inculcate, right? So yes, along with the uh, green cover, you also do water harvesting. And you, what you do today is not enough. You have to carry on maintaining what you're doing. You need to carry on and on and that dialogue and that way of life, that's the, prop, that's the biggest challenge. And that's why you find that um, uh, very little gets done in a sustainable manner. Because you know, you, it's a lifestyle change. And it's from one generation to the other. So because, uh, you know, you have these elders saying, oh, we had it, you know, we could come back from the forest and do so much. And, and you people can't do anything. You know, it's not about we could do and you could not. You know, it's the fact is that the forests were in a, back, in a backyard before. And hence there was this bounty of nature. And, you know, there was uh, liters of milk or whatever for that matter. So if we don't do anything today, what are we going to pass on to the next generation? So you now have, I'm sure there'll be other kinds of uh, things. You have hydroponics, you have so much research is also happening. Innovation is happening. It's not always, everything is not grim. Of course it is happening. But the fact is that you have to maintain a balance and continue, you know? Yes, no, very, very true, very true. It has to be, uh, you know, it has to be a balance and rightly said that ecology is a lifestyle. Uh, I've actually, yeah, I, I truly believe that. And thankfully it was driven very early into my life as well. But uh, a lot of, lot more work to be done there. <laughs> but uh, any last wish? So Anita Ji, I just had a, I'm very curious to ask you one thing. If you had a wish in all the things you wanted to do, Okay, for the Himalayas in your community, what would be the topmost thing? Like a... You know, it's a, it's a good question. And a lot of people are thinking about it. And you know, it's, it's always very difficult to say, what's that one thing that you want to do? And because if it is that one thing, you know, it's like somebody asked me, what's your favorite song? You're very difficult to now suddenly <laughs> say, which is your, because there are so many. You know, there are so many things and also because there are so many interlinkages, especially in the mountain. But the fact still remains nature comes center stage always, you know, because there are so many that that's the crux of the matter. Somebody said, no, whatever we do to this nature is we do it to the web of our own lives, whatever we tinkle with it. So we have to do that. That is there are many other things, but the point is one has to keep that mission in mind because if we work towards it, many other things will start falling in place on its own. With that, that's that's my uh, personal view. Yes. While you do short-term 
to improve your quality of life in the short term, you do engage in here and now things also because you can't always just look at the next generation, for instance. While we do that, you need to keep that um, larger goal, the larger uh, uh, vision also in place. So nature is center stage and especially up in the mountains because that's because it's not just for us. It's not just for people who live in the mountain. It's also downstream. For us, especially in Himachal and uh, Uttarakhand and Kashmir, is the entire Indo Gangetic plain that you're impacting. You know, it takes you down almost all the way down to Madhya Pradesh. What we do up over there is uh, impacting downstream also. So these things are very important to keep in mind. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm, I think now we can open up for questions. Um, does anybody have questions? Rinalini or uh, anybody has questions? Okay, uh, so this this video is avail will be available on YouTube as well as Instagram, Anita ji. So a lot of other people will be viewing this video. I think we planned it very last minute, apologies for that. But I just thought that, you know, we should bring you on board to start like a conversation somewhere and also tell people that we are also uh, sourcing from such an um, you know such a beautiful organization i don't think we talk so much we don't talk enough about um, all the people we work with so the endeavor is also to uh, bring it out there and get your stories out and a lot more will be coming so uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, sumitra uh, I, I want to thank you for bringing them on board it's been a very uh, useful discussion thank you so much thank you to the yeah. speakers too yeah uh, yeah so i will share the contacts uh, anita ji do you want to share some contacts in the chat box so that it can be available for everybody or shall i go ahead uh, should i write your website or yeah you can put the website and the email anyway personally yeah if you can write it like if you want to share something with all uh, so that people can, because some, some of the participants have asked for your details. And so Mitra, you as well, you should go ahead and write your details. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Even, even your uh, website. Yeah. Have it. So that they can contact you as well. Yeah. Yes. Great. So thank you so much uh, to both of you for joining us. It was really, I, I love the conversation today. It was very enlightening. Uh, so Mitra, kudos because you really, you're such a dynamic person and you're leading the organization well. I know that I met you at least six, seven years ago and you've grown into such a lovely entrepreneur. Um, and just the way Sudha auntie is always praising you and saying that uh, she's doing such wonderful work and <laughs> makes me feel very proud. Yeah? For me, you know, whenever I started working, it's been 14 years. I have learned, yeah. learned so many things with the Tiger Trust. It's like uh, my home. Tiger Trust is my home now. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for giving this opportunity for thank sharing you. with all of you. And we'll see <laughs> if we can have more conversations. Yes. And thank you, Anita ji. Um, have a good day, everybody. Yeah, good happy Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Next time Bye. I will get my mom as well to join. She's traveling. But Anita oh. ji, she's like a village doctor and you can have some beautiful conversations with her as well about food and natural medicine, etc. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bye. Happy Bye. 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 Bye.